today I'm going to talk about Max Chapter 8 Mathematical Modeling. What is mathematical modeling? A mathematical model is a mathematical relation that describes the real world situation. A mathematical model is a representation of a system or scenario that is used to gain qualitative and or quantitative understanding of some real world problems and to predict future behavior. The world around us is filled with various important questions that are not answered. For example, how much will it cost to go to college or university in 10 years? Will the population in Malaysia surpass 40 million? And is it possible to identify the personality trait of cybercrime victims by studying the behaviors of the web sufferers? There are a few important components in mathematical modeling. First, identifying and defining the problems. Second, making assumptions and identifying the variables. Third, applying mathematics to solve problems. Fourth, verifying and interpreting solutions in the context of the problem. Fifth, refining the mathematical model. And lastly, reporting the findings. Here is one example for the question the grocery store, which is far from your house, sells a pack of 10 kg rice at a lower price than the one closer to your house. Is it worth the drive for a cheaper deal? We can use the six components that I mentioned just now to solve this question. Firstly, identifying and defining the problems. The price of a pack of 10 kg rice and the cost of petrol. Determine the distance from the two stores to your house respectively F and find the information needed from the internet. For example, the price of a pack of 10 kg rice from each store, the distance of each store from your house, the current petrol price and the car's petrol consumption rate and so on. Secondly, making assumptions. The road between the house, store A and store B, is a perfect straight line. Driving car to the stores, purchasing the same number and brand of rice as store A and store B. Thirdly, identifying the variables. This is a very important component so that you can solve the question uh, more easily by using the formula. Let S equals to the distance between store A and store B. P1 equals to the price of a pack of 10 kg rice at store A. P2 equals to the price of a pack of 10 kg rice at store B. M equals to the petrol consumption rate of the car in km per liter. N equals to the number of packs of 10 kg rice to be purchased. A big H, the current petrol price in RM per liter and a big S, the difference in price in RM for purchasing the pack of 10 kg rice at store B as compared to store A. And a capital T, the difference in the cost of petrol in RM for driving to store B as compared to store A. Applying mathematics to solve problems. Now we can uh, know that the price of a pack of 10 kg rice at store A equals to uh, 25 ringgit and 95 cent. Store B is 23 ringgit 99 cent. Let the quantity of 10 kg rice to be purchased be two packs. The price to be paid. So the store A will equal to 51 ringgit 90 cent and store B is 47 ringgit 98 cent. Therefore, by purchasing the rice at store B, one can save uh, 3 ringgit and 92 cent. Next, let the distance between store A and store B be 6 km. The petrol consumption rate of a car be approximately 17.6 km per liter. The current petrol price be 2 ringgit and 8 per liter. Petrol needed for the 6 km road. Now we can use the 6 km divided by 17.6 km per liter and we'll get a 0 0.341 liter. By using the answer above uh, times 2.08 liter times 2, we'll get uh, 1 ringgit and 42 cents. That is the cost of petrol for the 12 km. Therefore, we'll save 
uh, 2 ringgit and 50 cent by purchasing 2 packs of 10 kg rice at store B. Verifying and interpreting solutions in the context of the problem. The resulting mathematical model is as follows. S equals to P1 minus P2 times N. T equals to S divide N times H times 2. So by using the formula above, S equals to 25 ringgit 95 cent minus 23 ringgit 99 cent times 2, we will get 3 ringgit and 92 cent. For T, we will use uh, 6 divided 17.6 times 2.08 times 2, so we will get uh, 1, 1 ringgit and 42 cent. If S bigger than T, then it is sensible to drive to store B to purchase rice and save more money. If S smaller or equal to T, then we should not drive to store B to purchase rice. Since S is bigger than T, you will save more money by purchasing rice at store B. Hence, it is sensible to drive to store B. Thus, the mathematical model is able to solve the problem. Fifth, refining the mathematical model. The assumption made regarding the road between the house, store A and store B is a straight line needs to be revised. If the road between the three places is not a straight line, then the model needs to be revised to reflect this change. Lastly, reporting the findings. Use symbols and diagrams when necessary to report the findings. The symbols and diagrams will depict the whole modeling process until it leads to results. Every model has strengths and weaknesses. What is important is that the model identifies those strengths and weaknesses in the report. For example, value of a person's time is not considered in this model. Is it worth driving an extra 12 km for someone to save 2 ringgit or 50 and 50 cents? According to this model, saving 5 cents is considered worthwhile. Secondly, the model did not account for any environmental considerations. Is it environmentally responsible to drive an extra 12 km just to save 2 ringgit 50 cents? This model did not account for environmental efforts such as efforts to reduce carbon emissions. In conclusion, mathematical modeling process consists of six components. Start, identifying and defining the problems, making assumptions and identifying the variables, and then applying mathematics to solve problems. Fourth, verifying and interpreting solutions in the context of the problem. It need to refine the mathematical model, repeat the steps, identifying and defining the problems, if no, reporting the findings and this will end the question. Thank you. This is all of my presentation. Thank you for watching.